Luca and Kyrie are the two best closers, I think, in this series. You can make an argument that the two best closers in the NBA, two of the best shot makers in the NBA. Um, on paper, Boston has the better team. On, pa on paper, Boston is the deeper team. I really liked what you said, and I think it still holds true. And, and it's been on display. Like we just talked about earlier, for Dallas to win this these games against Minnesota, for them to win our expectation, for them to win the finals, any game in the finals, like you need Luka and Kyrie to be dominant. We've seen Boston, albeit beating worse teams along the way in the East. Tatum hasn't had the best game some nights. Jalen Brown's been a little bit quiet some nights. Derek White stepping up. He giving you crazy numbers. That's a great point. Right. Like they, they don't need to have both of their stars have ridiculous games. That's a great Because point. you could have a crazy performance from Derek White. Chris Stapps might come out and have a crazy performance. Drew Holiday messing around, knock down a couple threes. Like, there's a lot of different options, like you said, for the Celtics to be able to win. Then Dallas feels like it all has to start with Luke and Kyrie have to be giving you 55 plus, 60 plus combined points. If they're mm -hmm. not giving you that, you know what I mean? Like, wh wh where's it coming from? Like, right. like, unless it's just like they're just out here dotting up your defense, but from the self-creation aspect, it's got to come from them too. Mm -hmm. Um, I've thought a ton, a ton, a ton about this series schematically, matchup-wise. From both perspectives, what can Dallas do to defend Boston? What can Boston do to defend Dallas and Luka and Kyrie? The biggest thing that I think has, and I'm talking, move the needle ever so slightly. And I'm going to preface all of this by saying I will not be surprised either way. First of all, I think this is a minimal six-game series. I, I really no think it's a seven-game series, barring any type of freak stuff going on. Um, I don't see a way – or I don't think that I would be surprised either way with these teams winning. I'm just going to preface my mm -hmm. pick with that. But – I really think that the thing that has swayed me ever so slightly because we live in this world of we have to make a pick. <laughs> I do just genuinely like the supporting cast of the Boston Celtics just a tad bit more. I feel more confident in the shot making of guys like Chris Apps, Porzingis, and Derek White, and Drew Holiday, even though he's not the best historic, uh, you know, field goal percentage, especially true shooting percentage guy in the playoffs. But because it's like, in reality, you need Drew to be maybe on some nights, bro, not even a fifth option. You could really say you got yeah. JB, you got JT, you got Chris Stapps, you got Derek White. You might have Al Horford giving you buckets. So it's like, you don't even necessarily need to have Drew. So sometimes it's just like, just that extra, mm, just above to get you over. Mm -hmm. So for that, and because I had this on, because they made the finals, I ain't going to disrespect them. So I'll take the Mavericks uh, jersey off. I, I was about to say, that's a little crazy. I'm not going to lie. Dang. Not the Give me Mavericks the Celtics. Jersey. Uh, not we, the haven't, we haven't jersey actually, off. this entire playoffs, disagreed a ton. Nah, not really. On, uh, on our, our, our picks or our predictions, but. Yeah, man. Give me give me Boston in, in seven. I really do like let me get this hoodie on. Actually, y'all don't 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 cry to chop. I need to get a haircut. Um wow. Yeah, I just I think their supporting cast. If, if I have like when it comes down to these series, man, you gotta win four out of seven. I really do see a world where yeah, you know, Tatum might have one one rough game, but like, ah, Derek White gave you 25. He knocked down five threes. You know, mm -hmm. Chris Stapps had a game. He knocked down four or five threes. He got you a couple of good blocks. Oh, shoot, he, he, he caught a gaffer lob at the rim. He met him up there. Like, I just think on top of the fact that if anybody is going to be able to disrupt Kyrie or Luka for just one or two games, it's going to be the Celtics. Drew's just going to have a night where he's just under, under Kyrie's skin. There's going to be a couple of quarters where it's like, man, Luca just is getting frustrated out there because they got so much length on him. JT is 6'10, bro. Like, uh, he, 
I just I really have to put a little bit more faith in the options and flexibility that Boston has versus yes, Luca is far and away the best player in this series, but their path to victory is very narrow. Boston's is a decent bit wider, and their supporting cast, I think, is so much more versatile and has a lot more to offer. Um versus it's really gonna have to be a knockdown series for guys like PJ Washington and, and Derek Jones, and you know you're still going to need those type of performances from Lively and Gafford. Whereas, like, I could really see a world where any given night it could be one of any of these random. We might get moments where Sam Hauser just starts sparking it. You know what I mean? Like, it just mm-hmm. there's so many different ways for the Celtics to get there. But no matter what, I'm not going to be surprised either way in this series. But if you force me to pick one. Give me Boston in seven.